Yeah, yeah. First, I guess the cap. So that says, make Amiga great again. <laughs> it, it looks a little uh, like a certain other cap that's common down here. <laughs> Maybe not in this state, but other states. <laughs> right, right? Uh, it, it's kind of like a protest cap. So it's like, make Amiga great again, you know? Who cares about that other stuff? How about Amiga? <laughs> I, I don't really need this. But <laughs> and then my other, my other little uh, protest shirt I made a couple of years back, year back, was is I own Amiga. Remember, there's all this uh, fighting about who owns Amiga, who owns a trademark, who owns a patent. Well, there's no patents. Whatever, right? Copyrights. I said, no, no. I own Amiga. You own Amiga. You own Amiga. We do. We all own Amiga, not just some guy or whatever, lawyer, somebody, right? <laughs> no, no, we do, we do, right? Yeah. We're the guys who pay for it. <laughs> we made it, yes, we did. So that's what I'm trying to say here, not me personally, just to let you know. Um, <laughs> uh, a little announcement from, uh, from Kevin here. Um, what's your handle on the... Stonecracker. So on Amigas.net, Stonecracker posted a um, instructions for compiling from Windows, cross-compiling from Windows, Sigwin, to Amiga, and uh, it has broken apparently. And out on the web or in the room, anybody who has trouble with it, please get in contact with Stonecracker. Go to Amigas.net, click PM, email, whatever. Just tell him what's wrong. He will fix it. Okay. <laughs> He will fix it. So a little announcement there. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, now, Amiga DevCon. Okay, so I, I presented this, something very similar to this at the DevCon uh, <coughs> uh, three days ago now. Man, it's going crazy. Um, this is about the exec SG team. So, there's oh, there's our new logo, by the way. I should go back there. Yeah, yeah. There's our new logo. <laughs> the logo? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> when are you going to finish it? <laughs> so so uh, it, was, it was Trevor, me, and Ken. We kind of forced our ideas on Ken, though. I know he doesn't feel too pleased about it, but he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> we went around and around. We need a new logo for our team, you know, because I like to rally around a logo, a brand, whatever you want to call it, color, just to keep everyone coherent, co cohesive and coherent. Um, and this is kind of like a construction, and there, there's the core, right? There's, there's the center, the, the red. That's exec SG inside, and then Amigo S all on the outside. Yeah. It, it's kind of rising sun as well. As it, kind of, kind of. I know a lot of Japanese, you know, Toyota. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, as Trevor mentioned in the previous announcement, uh, Trevor owns Amiga X XG, uh, Exec SG. Uh, I'm an appointed team lead. Um, Hyperion contracts in place. I think that was made clear. Uh, new logo. That, that's the part he didn't really mention much of. The new logo. <laughs> Skip that part. Uh, what is Exec SG? So, what what am I talking about? Because this. Uh, this may or may not be important to you, uh, because as a customer, consumer, whatever your user, you don't really care as long as, all as, as that it, as long as it all works, right? Um, it actually stands for Executive Second Generation, and the original executive was written by Carl Sassenrath, who has been here before. It's been a few years, I think, since we saw Carl. Um, it's a collection of components, actually. It's not just one thing. So. If you look on your hard drive, you'll see exec library. You won't see expansion because that's inside of that. But anyway, th these are contained within each other, but there's the various pieces, utility library, emulator. There's an X, there's an X86, no, we don't have that. Emulator, there's a 68K emulator in there. Uh, Amiga boot is part of it, and Amiga boot is a U-boot <coughs> thing, kick layout, stump debug. And there's, of course, the exec SG. Uh, SDK, that's also part of the package. So I drew a little diagram to help explain it. Ooh, it doesn't look as great on this projector. So it, the stuff in orange 
we could say is owned by Hyperion. The stuff in red is owned by Trevor. And then there's your various layers. You've got your hardware on the bottom, your firmware. The firmware only runs for, hopefully, as fast as possible. It gets out of the way, but it's still there, and we still have to maintain this stuff. Amiga boot loader. And then it goes into Amiga OS. And then you've got your exec. Uh, we actually handle the Zorro PCI stuff uh, and the 60K emulator and a bunch of other stuff. This is just a short little summary of stuff that makes up Amiga OS, as you can see in the big box. Hopefully that helps explain it. Um, and there's some more. Uh, what does it do? Exec SG does a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, memory, task scheduling, PCI, like I said, Zorro, on if you're in classic. Um, 60K emulation, the non-JIT version, because you actually have two 60K emulators in your Amigo S machine. You have the uh, interpreted one, and you have the JIT one. And the interpreted one is the one that runs first. And it's also the one that runs if the interpreted, or the it'll drop down to the uh, interpreted one. Uh, debugging, and there's some utilities in there. This is kind of strange, like tag list processing is actually part of Exec SG. Doesn't seem to belong, but it is in there. Uh, UTF-8 support that we've added. Oh uh, man, that was a while back now. Man, so the UTF-8 support is actually started in Exec SG. And a whole, a whole bunch of more components and bits and pieces. Now, okay, so that's what it is. So what's the status? Well. I, the private repository, the wiki's set up, the mailing list is running, um, kernels, all kernels are building for all targets, SDK is released, kernels are released, new DMA engine API, that's something brand new that uh, uh, we had help with, from Jamie, Jamie Kruger helped us with that, and implemented it, and it's uh, going to hit beta testing probably first week of November, I hope, that's, just, that's our schedule, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And also, we have a steering committee. So, <laughs> since we're working very closely with Hyperion, because one can't exist without the other, we had to have a little high-level manager kind of steering committee to make sure we all row in the same direction. So, I have Timothy DeGroote on there, Trevor, and myself. We didn't have anybody else yet. Um, so, this is like uh, very high-level decisions. Like, are we going to port to ARM? We'll decide together, right? We're going to ARM now, right? That kind of decision. Uh, we're going to add um, multi-core group decision, right? Um, so that kind of thing. We need to make sure we're all aligned because you can't have one fighting against the other. It just doesn't, doesn't work. And you guys will get an inferior product, so we don't want that, right? So that's what we're going to use that for. And dev team. So these are the guys doing the actual work. And right now, I, I've kept the team very small. I'm adding people bit by bit. And uh, we got Thomas, Tony. Ton the Thomas isn't here, but Tony's here. Olaf, Colin Wenzel, he's a um, local DOS expert. But he also fiddles around in uh, other pieces of exec. Jamie Kruger's on there, Frederick Wickstrom, and myself. And uh, interesting little tidbit about uh, when I added Frederick Wickstrom. I swear he started committing code within a, an hour of having access to the <laughs> repository. It's like, I just added you and you already changed something. <laughs> like, holy, <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> that was really cool. That was really cool. <laughs> He's keen. He's keen. Um, uh, Thomas, of course, got our kernels building. So that was the first task I gave to him. I said, okay, we got to get a building without any other external source files, you know. So that was natively? natively and cross. Yeah, yeah both. Yeah. You could try it, Tony. Yep, okay. you, you can. Okay, I will. All right. I guarantee it works. <laughs> Not a guarantee. Is yeah. Yeah. yeah, Frederick's is Salas zero zero or something. Yeah, yeah, that's his nick. Yeah, the, these guys, uh, they're also, I believe, we're all work for Hyperion as well. Yeah, are working or have worked. Yeah. And uh, if if you are a developer and you think you can help, email me. We'll we'll talk. Who knows, right? 
I, I'm always looking for more people. I, I, I think what I did in this case is I, I, um, I tapped them all. I said, I want you, I want you, I want you. And, uh <laughs> and that's how I have bu building the team. Hardware. So that's that was scary. When I made our list of targets, I got a little scared. We have a lot. Now, you could group some of them, but still, they are targets. So if I was doing a proper job, I would test on every single hardware target combination, right? Some of this stuff is pretty hard to come by now. <laughs> but I thought I'd list it all. Um, I think the only thing I dropped was Amiga 1 SE, which I don't quite count as a platform, <laughs> but <laughs> we, we'll argue about that one. <laughs> it wasn't really... Anyway. Um, I also was talking about uh, moving forward. We're going to have to start dropping some platform support at some point. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the bottom, which would be the bottom right, <laughs> and work my way back, you know, <laughs> for dropping support. So, if you still are on a blizzard or a cyberstorm, yeah, you probably want to get uh, 1222 soon ish. <laughs> Not say I'd do it today, but it will happen. <laughs> Roadmap. Okay, so this is something that uh, never seen before. <laughs> yeah. Did we have one in 2000? A roadmap? No? Amiga had a roadmap. Oh, wow. That was before my time then. <laughs> oh, oh, there was a roadmap apparently. Uh, 15 years ago? 19 years ago? Oh my, okay. So this is new. Um, <laughs> so my roadmap, which I've been refining with Trevor and Thomas Frieden actually, is to do these things. Uh, what we want to focus on is getting the 1222 out the door, right? So that's number one, get it out the door, whatever that means. So exec SG team, what that means is getting the uh, floating point emulation and replacement stuff working nice and smooth. I, I've seen some bad things happen with the numbers crunching. We've got to fix those. So it's close, but it's not done. So I want to get that done. Uh, I want better logging, better debug logging. And we especially need that for multi-core because with multi-core, you got a whole bunch more fun. And you got to know what core you're running on. You got to know what time it is. Basic stuff that should be in the log without thinking, right? Like a uh, syslog on Linux, right? Or Windows Event Manager, or whatever it's called. Same kind of thing. Console on a Mac? I don't even use that Mac console. Is there? Okay, okay. It's called console on Mac. Um, and of course, bug fixes. Uh, the, the roadmap is a work in progress as well because this roadmap has no dates on it. Disappointing, I know. <laughs> but at least we know what we're doing. So that's something, right? So I've uh, adopted a product backlog approach to running this one, um, stolen from Scrum. And here are some details on what that means. Uh, I'll, I'll just highlight a couple things. Basically, this is a prioritized list of things to do. And the team will work on the highest priority item first, and will probably never finish the bottom item, whatever the bottom item is. This is kind of an interesting way to run things, because you know in software, you always have something new to do. Always, always, always. Because the environment changes. It's not just you, your product. The environment around you changes, and you gotta add a new feature, run a new hardware, whatever it is, right? And so one of the things is it never com it's never complete, a product backlog. So you got to make sure you got the priorities right. And I, can, I think we can safely say on uh, Amigo OS, um, we have a product backlog in Bugzilla, and there's bugs in there that will never be fixed, ever. <laughs> and I know I had this experience with uh, my previous company, one of the previous companies I worked for, we had a bug database, and um, 
at one year, somebody went in there and said, okay, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We got to purge. And they took the last 2,000 items and went, chop. <laughs> and erased it and pretended they weren't there. Because if you look at them, you're just wasting money. Every item you look at, you waste money. Burn, burn, burn. <laughs> you got to, someday you got to just go, I give up, <laughs> move on. And you do this product backlog until the product is discontinued, basically, as soon as you stop. So it's continuous. Um, it, another important item is, is uh, this is a single, single source of all the stuff we're going to do. So if it's not on there, it's never going to be done. So if somebody posts to some web forum, oh, I want this feature, and some guy said, oh, yeah, we're going to do that on ExecSD. Well, if it's not on the backlog, it's never going to be done. Now, ideally, I'd like to make the backlog public, right? But Trevor and I will discuss that. <laughs> if I was running things, no. Um, <laughs> uh, I really, yeah, but I got a product owner that might be a, have opinions. Uh, <laughs> or less single source. Yeah, and, and the owner. Yes, the owner. That's the other important concept. Trevor is the owner of the backlog, not me. I'm not, I'm not the owner. I could be delegated to run it, but he is the owner. So if Trevor decides multi-core is number one, it's number one. That's it. I don't argue, well, I can argue with him, but he still wins. There's, there's no voting. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, Tony. <laughs> That's got connotations. <laughs> Questions? So that, that was it, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my presentation. Question? Oh, I mentioned porting to ARM. <laughs> yeah, see, I can't open my mouth, can I? <laughs> no, no, that was an ex example, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if it's on the product backlog, though, so I will do it. So you know who to talk to, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, part of the logging, will that also be tied into the remote GDB server? Part of the logging, yeah. yeah. Is that going to be part of the remote GDB server? So GDB can, server. So you can be remote GDB. I did not think about that. Okay. I guess it is now. No, no, probably once. Yeah. It's, it just helps everyone. The logging. So how would that work? The, the logging is spitting out, and then that should go to a GDB server, which goes to wherever. Ah, very nice. Very nice idea. A Grim Reaper should be in there, too, I think. Because we used to have a GDB button on Grim Reaper. Does that still do anything? It's still there. It's ISDM? Okay. It still does nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's kind of two levels to that, right? Yeah. There's the exec SG level, which is down here, yeah. and then Grim Reaper is kind of on top of that. There's actually two Reapers in the system. I don't know if you know. Yes. There's Reaper and Grim Reaper. They're brothers or something. I don't know. <laughs> Reapers in the current. Is there a higher? Yeah, we're gonna do questions tomorrow morning, but uh, as well. But I was gonna get from that. Any other questions? What's the hierarchy of the Grim Reapers? <laughs> exact SG, Grim Reapers first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 68K. 68K. Is there any reason why not to have exact SG on 68K? Any reason not to have exact SG on 68K? Yeah. I guess not. <laughs> yes, it's a big question. It used to be. <laughs> yes, good. And we'll talk to the uh, steering committee. Be here to sure. Uh, last question. Yeah. What what fundamental software will this allow for OS four? Ah, yes. Like, it, like from a user perspective. Yeah, exactly. Ignore the developer. What's the user perspective? He said he asked, uh, "What fundamental software will this help with?" Right. So that, that's a that's the thing. Um, we we are a foundation service, basically. So yeah, look at it. So if we're not helping to get 10 4 5, whatever, LibreOffice going right, um, then we're not we're not relevant. So we're going to be adding um, uh, primitives so that 
things like the C++ library can call these primitives and work, right? Modern C++. So that's the kind of thing we're going to do. And modern C++ enables LibreOffice and all these other goodies that you guys want, right? And uh, makes actually um, multi-thread development a lot easier, a lot and, and uh, less less crash prone, all that good stuff. Uh, we also have to support new platforms that pop up. Right? So it's foundational. If there's new hardware or new virtual hardware, because we want to do virtual hardware as well, um, we want to support that at a foundation level and then the OS will build on top of that. So it's kind of a wishy washy thing, but it's important. Like we gotta we gotta all be we gotta start at the bottom, which is exec SG. And I guess the one layer below us, like I had the diagram, was uh, the firmware. So although people don't really care about it, if we don't have it, we don't get exec SG. It depends upon it, right? It's necessary evil, I guess you'd say. It initializes your hardware. Yes. Oh, Paul had a question too. Can you build all the firmware for all the targets? Can we build all the firmware for all the targets? CFE, you boot. Oh, the, the firmware itself. Yes. That's the firmware is not part of Exec SG. Okay. The firmware is it. Amiga boot and loader are. Okay. But uh, that's something that actually I wanted to bring into the umbrella, to be honest. I wanted to, to have U boot in the repository. I wanted CFE. I wanted uh, what's the other open firmware in our repository and building by us because that would make things so much easier to debug. Right. But you're not there yet. You don't have it. No, no. But it's all uh, is it all open source? You could GPL um, open firmware. I don't remember if it is. Hopefully we can obtain it. Trevor's nodding, so that's a good sign. <laughs> yes, sir. Can you explain in layman's terms how you're going to move exec XG forward and a big OS forward to be more modern without turning it into something like loaded Linux and Windows and mm. just in layman's terms? So what, what are your, what's going to make a big OS different? Okay, so the question is, like, how do we move forward and make Mingos different and support... Uh, well, how do you keep it different? How do we keep but keep the efficiency, so to speak? Yeah, keep the, it from becoming loaded. Right, yeah. The feel, that kind of right. stuff. Right. Yeah, that's all. I don't actually have an answer to that. You know? That's what the committee's important. I don't really have a, a direct answer to that. I, I know I know when it feels wrong. I can, I can say that. It's hard to know when it feels but I know when we're going the wrong direction, well, you know right away, right? Because to make things modern, you've got to steal yeah. technologies from Windows. Yeah, you got to steal Linux technologies, and, like the multi-core, for example, right? right. So multi-core on well, Amiga OS is difficult because you're going to break everything, right? So the idea right now is, okay, Core 0, that's Amiga OS. Core 1, well, okay. We're going to run over there, but if you go over there, you have to follow some more rules. You can't just take your your uh, your app and just go drag, drop, run on port one, right? So we can't do uh, seamless SMP because how in the world could that not break everything? Uh, yeah, you know. It's, uh, so the current plan is to you know do some baby steps first, you know, uh, get some pointers isolated. And, 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 but as soon as it starts to lag or feel bad, we'll know. We'll know and we'll say, whoa, back up, right? Sorry, I don't have a direct answer. But I know when it's going bad. Steve? Yeah. Well, we have a C memory protection. Memory protection. Oh, man. Oh, it's a tough one, eh? Yeah, again, destroys compatibility, but necessary. Necessary evil. So we, we just have a, a hybrid. Yeah. I mean, we only have more. I know that was on Thomas's list. We're very high on his list. Uh, he said, well, we really got to get that private memory working properly. Yeah. Where it actually is private to a task. So if you have a, a sort of process nomenclature, um, it would be so, but actual protection. By the way, you mentioned something that is key to me. Uh, you mentioned modern C++. If people haven't actually looked at, say, C++ 17, 
they should, because it's not your grandma's C++, C++ and ah. it is, it's truly a, a leap forward. And it, it, I, I gotta imagine that would accelerate a lot of development. Yeah, Chris's uh, comment slash question was on C++, and uh, actually just last week I, I just had a seminar with Jorn Struestrup, and um, he, he said, alive? in real life, yes, he's a very nice man, um, he said exactly the same kind of thing Chris said, you know, look at C++ 11, 17, 20, 20 is going to be huge, he thinks 20 is going to blow the heck out of 17. In his opinion, he said, 17, that's old school. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I haven't even tried 17 myself yet. <laughs> it's like, what? Because <laughs> he's adding this new feature to the language concepts, and he, he thinks that's going to revolutionize a lot of computing. So we, we got some catching up to do. Yeah, but you're right. Uh, we, we have to support modern C++ languages uh, because all of our tools are based on it now, all the modern tools. And it, it actually um, makes for better software as well, which is a nice thing. It's less less crash prone, a lot less. It's mission critical now. Mission critical. Yeah. It's another. C++. Thing to say. C++. Modern C++ library support is mission critical. Yeah, modern C++ support is mission critical. I agree with that. And ExecSG can help to make that happen. And we will. We will as much as we can. And then Hyperion needs help as well, of course, with the other pieces. Uh, not so much, but you never know. There's, there's, C++ is a very large language, as you know. So there are aspects of it that you need help from all sorts of OS bits and pieces. Thank you.